your journey and your success in the glamorous world of modeling as a makeup artist, as a, a model booker and an educator for some of the top agencies in London, South Africa, Germany. I mean, your love for this industry started to curdle, um, despite the fact that you had access to so many uh, contacts at the time as well. And one could even say that your career was really at the peak of its success. I mean, it really set the scene for what ended up being a profound transformation for you. Can you tell us a little bit more about that part of your life? Was that sure. happening in Melbourne at the time as well? Well, it was actually before, just before Melbourne. I was working in agencies in Melbourne a little bit. And then when I moved to Brisbane, I picked up there and, and worked uh, in Brisbane and on the Sunshine Coast in agencies. But the really big scale agencies were the ones that I had access to or worked in when I was, uh, before, I moved to, um, before I moved to Australia. Mm -hmm. And look, it was very glamorous. It was, you know, I remember going to a party in London um, and sitting on a couch with Liam and Noel Gallagher from Oasis. Mm -hmm. and and Kate Moss coming in and kind of squashing next to me. And, you know, I just, it was constantly that sort of world. Mm. But the biggest problem was that um, I think as a young girl, I had really bad acne, really, really horrific acne. And it was one of the worst cases that they'd ever seen. And I always tell my girls this when I talk to young girls, um, because I think they look at you and they don't think that there's anything, you know, in the past. And oh, yeah. I, sh I show photos to them about what I went through. And, you know, I, I remember that for probably about, you know, five years of my teen years, um, I'd actually sticky tape up. Um, I'm echoing. Can you hear me? I can definitely hear you. Great. Yep. Um, I'd sticky tape up a mirror so that I didn't have to look at myself. And so I think, you know, it only made sense that I'd fall into a world that was so beautiful after I'd spent so many years feeling so ugly. Um, um, and I needed that world to heal. Of course you did. It was an essential stepping stone, definitely. Yeah. So I really needed to be amongst the uber, uber glam. Um, and I remember, you know, one day in London, I got a call from my agent and I'd been booked to do James Bond at the time, the Pierce Brosnan's wife's makeup and rocking up at one of the hotels, which was the Ritz in, in London and, um, and meeting James Bond, you know, and it was just so random. That was my world. Wow. Um, um, but that was more normal at the time as well, wasn't it? It was, and you know what? I um, I loved it for what it was, definitely. And I think I could have, you know, um, I think if you, if you you're not very advanced spiritually, you can you can stay in that world forever. But I think you get to a point where you you have to get out of of that that world because it is very superficial. And I think the biggest problem that I had was I was dealing with young girls who were 15, um, 14, and fifteen that were coming to me and saying, you know, I, I went to this casting and I really wanted it, and the photographer was 65 years of age and he said to me you know if you sleep with me or if you do x y and z you know i'll put you on the top of the list and then i'd come back in tears because they didn't get the gig so it was it was a real there was some real shocking stories i mean i could go on and on about yeah. what i what we had to deal with back then um but that's when it started to change and that's when i started to I think my ego started to get less and less the older I, I got mm -hmm. and I started to tap into what was happening around me mm -hmm. and just, you know, realized that it was just, it was not okay. And I became more of a mentor to these girls mm. than just their, their booker because it was a big concern. Their health and well-being was a massive concern for me because we mm. used to spend so much time together. Of course, of course. Yeah. Was, there, was there a massive catalyst for change that made you go, you know what, I'm done with this world? Um... I think the biggest thing was having a conversation with, with the agency owner that I was working for and just saying to, to them at the time we were all really good friends, I just said, look, I think our girls will be so much uh, better off for our clients if they're emotionally sound, if they actually understand who they are, um, they will they will be better for everyone. So why don't we start this program for them on the side of everything that we do, where we put them through a um, a sort of a self-confidence program, get them right emotionally, get them to understand who they are, and then we send them out. So no one's allowed to join the agency until they've done this program. Amazing. And so you initiated that? I initiated it. And it was something that I actually wanted to trademark and stick in all modeling agencies around the world. But I, wow. I realized that there are very few agencies that are tapped in to think like that. In fact, probably one of the only ones that I've ever dealt with. In 2010, I... 
had Beautiful Minds, I've been running it for a few years, mm-hmm. and a, a massive agency in Europe called Wolf Models. They're in Hamburg, Milan, and London. Mm-hmm. Flew me over to run sessions, Beautiful Minds sessions mm. in, in their agencies because they wanted their girls to have that Beautiful Minds experience because they were realizing that there were all these issues coming up. And that's probably one of the only agencies that I've ever dealt with that actually really gives a damn about how their girls are really going internally you know other than mm. you put on a bit of weight sweetie and your hair should be lighter and your skin's mm. not looking great this week mm. you know mm. oh yeah. I know I know yeah, many so. of my one-on-one clients are actors and musicians and there's a thing uh, what's it called when you go to America from Australia it's called pilot season and yeah. so you go to audition after audition after audition and by the time they come back and, and see me for a series of sessions they're quite broken emotionally mm-hmm. and so a lot of them have realized how important their mindset is the the act of being quite detached from mm-hmm. the outcome of mm-hmm. i.e getting the part or the outcome of um, somebody else validating you or having Mm. your validation coming from an external source, such as somebody thinking that you are the right look or the right fit Mm. or the right body Mm. type. And the things that directors and even producers get away with saying to aspiring up-and-coming actors is extraordinary to me. Mm. Oh, no, it's it's frightening. And, you know, I used to do a lot of acting when I was younger and go to castings. Mm. And, you know, I remember being 18 and being pushed into a room and showing that that's if you want some cocaine, there's some cocaine there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then grab a coffee and makeup is next door. Mm -hmm. And that was just, that was just a nothing, you know, Mm -hmm. in in that world. It was considered Um, normal, yeah. It was considered normal. And unfortunately, if you're around something that's considered normal, it becomes normal. And then you get stuck getting out. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, Yeah. which a lot of good, a lot of these young girls really do, which is a problem. Yeah, I know, I know. And then the recovery period for many of them is also sometimes long and arduous, especially because if, yeah, if a lot of your validation comes from being pretty or having a certain look that you no longer have because of various reasons, such as, I don't know, this phenomena that's taking the world by storm that's called aging, uh, it's, going be, <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to to really access that soul centered, heart centered aspect of yourself where you're okay. You're okay yeah. if someone didn't, you know, necessarily give you that level of attention or that level of compliment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and not- unfortunately, unfortunately in that world, you know, models and actors, and I can say this because I've got many, many, many of my dearest friends mm-hmm. who are still in that world, mm-hmm. but you tend to be. Um, fairly insecure as it is. Mm. So you're pushing yourself into a world to get validation when you're mm. already insecure. Mm-hmm. And that is a cocktail that's quite dangerous. Oh, yes. Um, Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. When your self-worth isn't coming from an inside sir, source, yeah. as in internal, from yeah. you, but it's constantly coming from an external source because you become like a bottomless pit. The last yeah. compliment is you're only as, as, as good or as validated yeah. as your last compliment. You'll only want another one, won't you? 